Hello everyone. As you can see, I've been playing around with watercolours. I've been doing some watercolour doodle painting. Just look how gorgeous these are. Aren't they vibrant? Um, so let me just um, flip through some of my sample pieces. You can see that some of them I've doodled on um, and others I haven't. Um, some are more successful than, um, than others. You can see that this one went a little bit wrong and the colours bled together. So I'm hoping that we can try and fix this um, today and, um, you know, so that to save it from going Going into the bin um, this one here just these are so simple really pretty and easy to do um, that's another one I think this one was probably my most um, successful don't those look gorgeous just like pansies love these so I'm going to show you um, how I went about making these paints I'm going to be working with today are Chinese painting pigments which are slightly different to watercolour paints. Um, these are by Paul Rubens, these are the classical artist's um, Gukai paints and that's the sleeve that goes over the box, really sturdy box. Um, unfortunately all of the information inside it is in Chinese so you know not much information that I've been able to, to gather. So I've done a bit of research online and from what I can understand these are a cross between a watercolour and a gouache so they're much more opaque than your traditional watercolours and they are meant to be worked um, with out of the tubes as well they're not meant to be put um, into a palette like normal watercolour tubes would be um, I've swatched them the colours are really vibrant incredibly pretty um, so this is what they um, look like but you can see how opaque they are um, so as I say just um, in between a, a watercolour and a gouache now, as far as paint Paper is concerned. For these, I used a mixture of um, really cheap and expensive mixed media paper. I think this was Hobbycraft's um, own brand. And this one here was done on um, cotton rag paper, Cardi, K H A D I, cotton rag paper. This was much easier. This was more stable. I had less buckling. So that's what I'm going to be using for these two pieces here. But, you know, for practicing on, I think that cheap mixed media paper is absolutely fine. So at the end of the day, just use what you have. These are the palettes that um, I've been working from. So I've got these two palettes here. And let me just pull out these two colours. Let me just put um, a little bit more of this paint um, into my palette. So we've got this one, this one here. I love this colour. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You do not need much of this. A little goes an awfully long way. And I think this one here was um, this colour here. So we'll just put, whoops, I've lost my lid. So we'll just put um, a little bit of pigment um, in, in there. Then I'm just going to use some um, water. Um, let's use this water here just to dilute my paint. Um, what have I done with my paper towel? Here we are. I'm just going to wipe off the um, excess paint rinse my brush in my water reach in for some clean water here and then we'll put some in this palette as well let's water water this one down so those are the two colors that um, that i'm going to be using to start start off with now i used creation cc's method dot um, method to create my flowers i'm going to use this gorgeous crimson color to start off with and what i did was put three little dots of paint down on my paper rinsed off my brush and then it doesn't really matter where you start but i just spread the paint out like like this and the easiest thing to do is to move your paper around there we go just um, play around with it until you're happy with the shape of your petals rinse my brush off and then I'm going to add two more, two more dots. So one, one here, and one, one here. Again, rinse off that that excess paint. Let's start off on this side here. And again, I'm going flat down with my with my brush. I could do with a bit more pigment in in this one here. 
turning it around the other way and doing the same with this, this side. And that is my basic flower shape. How easy was that? Now, before this dries, I'm going to use some of that, um, that red, that brighter red. And I'm just going to dip some into the centre. Because my flower is still still wet, you can see that the paint is spreading, but I just love these two colours together. I think that's just absolutely lovely. Now, I want to add a bit more drama to the centre of my flower. Um, I've got some of the purple that um, I used for my flowers earlier, and I'm just going to drop some dots of purple into the centre as well. And I really like how that looks. Now, as far as the stem was concerned, um, none of the colours that um, I had in my set really was the colour that I wanted to use. I wanted something much more olivey um, with a brown undertone. So I ended up mixing some of this, which is like a hooker's green, with the um, umber and a bit of yellow as well. So these were the colours here that I was, I was mixing. I'm going to add a little bit more of the, the brownie colour here to my green. I really like that. And perhaps we can add a little bit of um, yellow as well. See if I can pick up some of the yellow that I've already got got left. Yeah, you see I like I like that. I'm going to use a smaller um, paintbrush. Dip my brush into my water and I'm just going to paint myself a really simple um, stem. And I don't have a very steady, steady hand, so I'm just doing it in small strokes like, like this. Thickening it up a little bit um, at the bottom and at the, at the top. I can always add a bit of the green into the centre of my flower as well, just to tie everything together. You see some of it has um, spilled or bled into this flower here, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. And then I'm just going to paint a couple of um, of leaves. I'm just going to pop this off to one side to allow it to dry and then we can decide whether we want to leave it um, as it is or do some doodling but let's try another one the boiler man arrived and so this one is completely dried out and i haven't started another one yet i've decided i'm going to doodle um, on this one first i want to try out this gold paint you can see that my paints have all dried out as well so this is what they look like um, when they've dried you can see that this green here has started to crack so i think that's what people mean um, by you know that, that you shouldn't use them as a dry palette that they're not really meant for that so I'm just going to squeeze some gold out now I have found that a couple of these the um, binder has separated um, but that's that's okay um, let's add some water to this just to thin it down I'm going to use my really small size 2 brush so here we are and what I'm going to do is just add a few gold touches just to the centre of my, my flower. That is really pretty. I'm not going to tilt it too much um, just because I don't want my paint to run. I'm toying with the idea of adding some splatters as well, but let me just get a piece of parchment paper first. It will help um, catch some of the mess. So I'm just going to load up my, my brush and let's add a few splatters. I'm not bothering to cover the flower up. Isn't that pretty? Don't overdo it, Nina. There we go. I'm going to leave it there like that. It's okay, so let's do another one. Now, whilst my boiler was being serviced, of course, all of my paints have uh, dried out. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to reconstitute them. Um, yep, that's fine. 
Let's wipe off some of the excess. Let me show you these as well. These were gifted to me for my birthday from my friend Mel. Aren't they beautiful? Um, here's another couple. They came in a set of four and these are tea light holders. And Mel said to me, you might not want to use them for candles. She said, I thought they'd be really good for using with your watercolours. Aren't they pretty? Um, so there are two with a smoky black and uh, two little um, green ones. So that's what I'm using here. Oh, this time I'm going to start off with the red. Um, I'm just going to add my three dots, the same as I did before. They're a bit closer together than they were the last time I did this. Let's clean off my brush. I'm also wiping most of the liquid away. Now, I think the trick with this, um, as we did before, just use the flat of your, your brush. I'll leave the link to Creation CC's video as well where I learnt um, this, this technique. It was an old video that she did, oh I don't know, two or three years ago, maybe even longer than that. But I think you need to get the first two petals really close together. Hers are a lot more subdued than mine. I like mine to be um, a, a little bit brighter. And then, so you've got the first two that are really close together. Move your paper around, or at least I find it easier to work this way, moving my paper around. And so now we've got the two that are close together and a petal that's on the opposite side, which means that it's easier to do the other two petals for a five petal flower. Um, so I hope that makes makes sense. So two more dots. Clean the excess water away, as I say, getting rid of um, quite a lot of the liquid. And then just adding the other two, two petals. They don't have to be perfect. But just look how easy this is to get. A fairly symmetrical flower. So that's my, my first one. Um, and then what I'm going to do is add some of this beautiful crimson colour just to the centre of the flowers. Let's let that spread. And some of your colours, I think, spread spread more than, more than others. It must be something to do with the pigment um, that's in them. But I really like that. I could even add a touch of the crimson if I wanted to, just on the tips of the, the flower. Let's, let's try that. just on the tips, just whilst that, um, that paint is still, still damp. There we are. Also on this one here, I'm going to try and pull some of that paint into the center. Try and water it down a bit, see what this looks like. And just experiment. Let's mix these two colours here together. So I'm go just going to add some of my crimson into my red just to try and create a slightly different colour. Let's add a little bit more, clean my paintbrush first just so that I'm not um, contaminating this this one. Yep, that's, um, that's good to me. And then just try and get my paintbrush to, to a point. I'm going to do another flower just at the top, at the top here. Clean my brush off and I'm just going to start with them um, with this one. Move around to the to the next. Twist my paper round and do my third petal. And then which paint was I working with? It was this one here, wasn't it? And two more, two more dots. Rinse my water off. Twist it around the other way. It's just so much easier to, to do this if you move your paper around than keeping it in the same, same place, or at least for me it is anyway. And then I am just going to add some of that beautiful crimson again. 
You see that one's spreading a little bit more for whatever ever reason. Um, do I want to add anything to the edge of the flowers? I think it might look a bit strange perhaps if I if I don't. Then let's add some of the red into the yellow and see if we can and get ourselves an orange. It's kind of like um, a muddy orange. Do I like it? Well, let's try it and um, and see. So we'll have, whoops, let's just, we'll have three dots here as well. It's a bit more pigment, not quite dark enough. Let's just let that um, spread. some into the bottom as well. And I'm going to try not to get these to bleed together. Let's see how successful I can I can be. <laughs> yep, so far so good. Two more dots. One there and one there. I'll do this one first just to give the other side a bit more time for the paint to dry. That's actually a really pretty colour. It's sort of like um like a rusty orange. And again, I'm just going to add the same um, crimson to the centre of the flowers, just so that they've all got something in common to tie them all to, together. Let's see if we've got um, enough of this green paint to draw in my stems. I'm just reconstituting this by adding a drop of water. really like that, um, that colour there. I'm just going to grab my smaller paintbrush as well, just cleaning, giving that one a good clean. So this time I'm using my, my size two, <coughs> excuse me, croaky, croaky voice. Let's dip my paintbrush in some, some water. And exactly as I did before, just doing this in strokes like this, because I haven't got a steady enough hand to do it in one felt swoop, as it were. Oh, you see, I want to get rid of get rid of that where it's bled. Let me just and I'm just mopping mopping it away. There we are, gone. So You see, I just can't draw a straight line if my life depended on it. <laughs> but that's OK. I know lots of you probably can't either. And then if we try and bring bring this one round. Da, da, da. There we are. That was better. I think you've got to do it in, in a quicker, quicker motion. And then again, we can add some, some leaves. Let's grab a slightly thicker paintbrush again this time. Let's give it a, a good clean. I don't want any red in my green. Yep, I like that. So what I'm doing is 
putting my paintbrush, making sure I've got um, a point, starting off really lightly, pressing down harder and then lifting, lifting up when I get to the to the bottom. Let's try that on, on this side here as well. A bit more paint. Pressing down and lifting, lifting up until it joins the, the stem. And then we'll do on this side here as well. You see, I need much more practice at um, at this, but yeah, that's um, that looks good to me. Do I want to add any green into the centre? I do kind of like the way that that looks, you know. There we are. Just thicken that up. And don't meddle with it too much, Nina. These two here are some of the ones that I first experimented with. And you can see that this one here, I've got that gorgeous crimson, but then it's much paler here on these two petals. What I'm going to do, let's see if we can do something um, about this. In fact, what I probably should do, let me just move that one, that one out of the way for a second, is just spread the pigment out. I am just going to add a tiny amount of that crimson. Let's see if we can spread it out and just make it a bit darker, just to make it look a bit more intentional. Let's try and do the same thing with the other side as well. Using the flat of my brush and you see that looks a whole lot better. And the same with this one here, the purple clearly spread um, into, into the other petal. Um, so what I'm going to do is just reactivate some of my purple. Let's just add a bit more, a bit more water so that it's not quite so um, intense. Let me just move my dirty jar out of the way and bring um, a clean one in. Let's just clean my, clean my brush. And what I'm going to do is just add some water, not too much, to the petals. In fact, if I drag it out from the center here just wiping the excess water away from the side of my jar or on the side of my my jar so just following that shape and then let's just try and drop some drop some in and again see if we can make that look a bit more intentional and it's working so no need to throw the ones that um, went a little bit skew if away I think we can um, I think we can fix them I'm going to leave this one um, as it is just because I like it my flowers are all dry now this is the one that I added the gold to that is just really pretty and I'm going to leave that one exactly um, as it is and then these are ones that I've either added to um, of course I added the extra flower to this one here and these ones I altered just to cover up the mistakes that I've made with the with the petals. I'm going to start off with this one here. I'm going to use my white pen from ZSCM. Um, this is a, a, a acrylic paint marker. And the, the, the paint is permanent. I reviewed these. I'll leave the link to this video here in the description box below. But all I'm going to do is just add some doodling and um, what I like about this pen is that the paint is really opaque um, on the test that I did I found it to be just as opaque if not more than the Posca paint pens definitely permanent from the tests that I did as well so as I've said I'll leave the link to the video in the description box below um, they come in a set of 20 10 black and 10 10 white really like these and again let's just add some stems and I'm pressing really lightly here twisting my paper around just because it's much easier not overthinking it either isn't that pretty in fact actually what I could also do is maybe just add a few doodles if your pen stops working just um just pump it on a piece of of paper just going to add some scribbly lines just down the stem 
as well, just adding to that um, that doodle effect. Let's add some veins to the leaves as well. Really loose and scribbly, not over overthinking this. You don't have to do the leaves if you don't want to either. I think either would work just as well. But how pretty is that? I'm going to do the same with this one here as well, just to disguise the areas where, you know, we had to add some extra, extra paint just some loose doodles. You could use black, but I think white on these beautiful pastels just goes really, really well. And I'll carry on doing this off camera and I'll come back and show you what I've done at the um, end of the video. give you a flip through of all of these flowers so I've added um, doodling to most of these some um, more to some than than others I've added doodling to the stems on this one here you see I think that's made all the difference to to this one here and that one there as well has been saved and you know these could be used for cards um, all sorts and um, journal pages you know ephemera for your journals I've added some black doodling just using a really fine um, pen here not 0.25 nib nib pen love this one here because I just absolutely love the vibrancy of the red this is my least favorite um, just because the flowers are just too big for the, the the page so the stems just don't look right so I'm discarding um, that one there this one I really love I've decided to leave this one exactly as it is all I've done with this one here is added some white and black to the centers and of course this was the one that we did with the gold Before I'm in danger of waffling on for far too long I'm going to bring this video to a close but I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing how to create these super super easy um, watercolour doodle flowers. Um, of course if you've enjoyed my video today as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below um, but most importantly thanks for watching. Take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon and I'll certainly be back to experiment with more of the beautiful colours um, in this pretty set.